What's the absolute best treatment for a lumbar disc herniation? Yesterday, I went over the case of a 32-year-old male who had a history of a microdiscectomy done about a year ago and bent over and picked up a heavy box. He felt sudden pain in his lower back with shooting pain down his right leg. How can that possibly happen? He just had a microdiscectomy. His MRI confirmed that he actually re-herniated the same disc that he just had surgery on. See, discs are the cushions that sit between the bones in our back, and it has a hard ring around it. But if that ring becomes compromised or has a tear in it, you can get a disc herniation. This patient actually had a microdiscectomy done a year ago where the surgeon went in and physically removed that piece of disc that was herniated. But remember, there's still a weak spot in that disc. So when he leaned over, bent over, and picked up that box, guess what? More discs came out. That's so frustrating. He's young, healthy, and active, so what can we possibly do to help him with his pain? We can absolutely recircle the wheels of all the conservative treatment that he did before his last surgery, including physical therapy, chiropractic treatment, inversion, medications, injections, but what if none of those things work? Could he have a discectomy done again? Sure. With a discectomy again, he certainly runs the risk of herniating it even a third time. And then what? Most surgeons would recommend a revision microdiscectomy or even a lumbar fusion, but is there any other options out there that exist for this patient? In this young, healthy patient, I have two options that are unique to him that I think would help him long term. The first would be a revision microdiscectomy, but I would suggest that we would add what's called a barricade implant. It's a device that will actually plug the hole in the disc and reduce that risk of re-herniation. It's a relatively newer technology that I have utilized in my practice to help lower the risk of disc re-herniation. It's called a barricade for a reason because you implant it into the disc after you remove the risk and it holds up a barricade to prevent that disc from re-herniating in the future. If this patient had a large annular tear, did you know his risk of re-herniation is 25%? That's not very good odds. With this implant, we can reduce that risk to under 5%. Now that's pretty good. The other option I would talk to this patient would be what's called a lumbar disc replacement, where we can actually remove the entire disc and replace it with a new one. That preserves the mobility of that spinal segment, so it maintains its motion, he maintains his flexibility, and the best part is that if the disc is replaced, you can't actually re-herniate it. That begs the question because disc replacement seems ideal for anybody with a bad disc. Who is a candidate for a disc replacement? Well, let's go through the inclusion criteria. It has to be someone under the age of 60. They have to have a single level disc pathology at L4-5 or L5-S1, have a normal bone density test, have a lack of facet arthropathy, meaning the joints in their low back have to have no arthritis in them. In addition to that, they can have no instability at that segment, meaning no parse fractures and no spondylolisthesis or abnormal motion of that segment. If they meet all of these criteria, which this patient does, they would be an appropriate candidate for disc replacement. A small incision is made on the patient's abdomen and the disc is removed in its entirety and replaced with an implant that preserves motion. This procedure takes about an hour and is done outpatient where the patient can go home the following day. This particular patient had this motion preserving procedure and went home the day of surgery. He had no pain after six weeks of recovery and he is back to doing most things without fear of re-herniating his disc. I hope you guys learned something from today's case study and stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.